Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. So there has been an update to dreams. Yeah, some uh, gadgets, like a keyframe. Um, so if this keyframe like changes the color of this thing here, then it actually has invisible wires going to those settings that we changed. So that setting and that setting. But we can't see those wires. But if you go to like um, the thermo, you can see it's using wires and animation because it's actually got wires going into those settings. Now we have invisible connections. And now we can um, select an object that is affected, like receiving a wire or is sending a wire to another object. And now it goes into those actual settings. So we can see exactly where it goes. And like even when it goes into another tab or something, that works as well. So it works exactly like normal wires, which is very cool. So if we just had a random gadget and you have a keyframe or an action recorder works the same way, you can like move this gadget to some other place, right? With that keyframe. That has a wire going into it as well. So it's like plugging into a kind of hidden secret uh, setting on this object, which tells it what its transform is, which is um, the position and the rotation and also the scale all at the same time. And that all happens with one wire. And that's why when you keyframe something, it's setting all those things at the same time, even if maybe you don't want it to do that. And again, let's see if I guess that wire it does. And it says it's coming from an anim animation invisible wire. So cool. I wonder if you can delete it. You can. Huzzah. So if you had a puppet and like a classic example is you want to tint all the all the stuff in the puppet or something. There we go. Now you can see why that's so bad for Thermo. <laughs> and then you have like another keyframe uh, and then you change it, have another one for a different color. Like that. And that's got a whole load of new wires. So that's like 20 wires or something. So each time you do one of those keyframes, you have 20 more wires. And, um, and that's why the Thermo goes up and up. So now it's 1.45 just from two keyframes, which is pretty bad. So then uh, I've shown the technique before where you, um, uh, which Acer showed. So I got it from him. Where you like tint them all and then you say um, piping one of the objects uh, color into all the other objects. Uh, yeah, so you can now just set that one to red and then set that one to green. And there's only one wire going to the neck sculpt and then one wire going from the neck sculpt to these other places. So you can kind of daisy chain it around. And it's uh, a lot cheaper on Thermo for each of these keyframes. Same goes for variables. So this variable, this is um, setting the variable. So it has a wire coming out of it, going into the variable it's setting. And if I have a load of variables, it's going to be setting all of those variables. So it's got a wire going into each of them. If we change this to get, then it has a wire coming out of the variables and going into here. And you can see how um, it's actually affected by the value of all of these variable um, gadgets. So it averages them out, it blends them, and then outputs that result from the variable modifier. And you can select again, like the sender or the receiver of that wire, and it will show those wires. Similar but different are wireless receivers and wireless transmitters. So here, it just has a line because these don't actually use wires. 
So that so if we deleted everything but those, then go into here, it uses no wires at all because it doesn't use invisible wires under the hood. So when you select it, it doesn't show an invisible wire. It shows just a, a green line going to the other object. And it goes from the transmitter to the receiver. And if you have the receiver selected, it's still from the transmitter to the receiver. Um, let's see if it works, if it's hidden inside a chip. So we select it, it still works. So that's cool. And then we open it and it keeps pointing there. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we've got menu music setting now, which I already went and turned off for the ambient music in menu. So you can hear in the background some subtle music stuff happening. And if you turn it off, you no longer hear it, um, which is cool. Something cool I requested was value slider. Uh, when you're making logic and stuff, you often have like a value slider with sets, uh, a set number of settings or whatever. So like uh, uh, maybe zero is that it's in flying mode and one is it's in driving car mode and two is it's it bounces around or something like some sort of vehicle. Um, but you'd have to have like these, you couldn't, so you'd do something like, now you can only set it from zero to, to point two, and you'd have these three slots that the player can choose from. But it's kind of confusing to see that when, when it's, you want to cha change it to a different number, ideally, instead of just uh, these decimals. And in other cases, um, you might, have it like uh, for example wired into a timeline and you want to be able to like drag this and have it smoothly go to any point on the timeline but it's kind of stuck to these uh, one decimal place things so now we have a setting for the decimal places so we can set it to three and now it's much more precise and we can set it to zero and now it's only on integers so if we give it some more integers so now if we want three slots we can just say so we've got zero mode one mode and two mode and that's uh, a bit more user friendly for people using our logic so that's cool thanks for watching i hope you learned something interesting go to patreon.com slash to learn something new every day